This building has almost 800 years of history. Many people have lived, laughed and cried here. It is said that the spirits of many of them still remain. With dark figures, unexplained power cuts and strange voices, we had to investigate the Manor House restaurant. The Manor of West Bromwich is listed in the Doomsday Book under the possessions of William Fitz Anskulf, the Baron of Dudley. The Manor House was constructed in the late 13th century and has had many residents. It was passed through the heirs of William until 1713, where it was put up for sale due to financial difficulties. Eventually, it fell into a state of disrepair in 1823. In 1836, it was converted into tenements where three families lived until the 1880s. These flats concealed the manor house. It was rediscovered whilst under demolition in the 1950s. The manor house has been restored and is now a restaurant. Imagine what it must feel like when you're in a room and you hear your own name called out. You turn round and there's nobody there. Well, that's exactly what happens in this room, the main bar area. Tonight, we're going to conduct a seance and hopefully contact some of the spirits that roam the manor restaurant. This is the old original manor house of the village of West Bromwich. It's a unique medieval hall house going back to about 1290. So we're talking of over 800 years of habitation on this site. In fact, 800 years of habitation in this building as it is now. But the strange thing about it is that there are plenty of people that have been here, that have visited the place, that have had paranormal experiences. There isn't an awful lot documented about it. I've experienced feelings um, round by the bar area, particularly round by the fireplace, um, and I've heard footsteps above um, the area of the bar where the fireplace is and the opposite end of the bar as well. Quite heavy footsteps running. The chapel is now part of the restaurant and on many occasions lights turn themselves on and off for no apparent reason. Also, a figure of a bearded man has been seen staring out of the windows. This building for many, many years was, was totally derelict but it's now been taken back to its original medieval glory. Renovation, of course, demolition, building work, disturbs ghosts, which I think is one of the reasons that things had been seen in the 1960s and the 1970s when it was being done. This room has recently been opened up, when previously, for many years, it was sealed. Could it be that the present owners have unleashed some kind of paranormal activity, as the spirit of a young girl has been seen, and also an angry presence has been felt? I've had my name called, footsteps, voices, and the, the main one, I was working behind the bar the one day, didn't see anybody coming, but knew somebody was there and shouted out, are you all right, can I help you? And as I walked up, they walked up and walked through the fireplace. And all I can remember is a long black jacket. Can't remember anything else, no head, no feet. That's all I can remember. There's another interesting thing. They have a toilet ghost um, in the ladies' toilets, seen on many occasions by people, children, um, a medieval person seen in one of the cubicles. And although people laugh about toilet ghosts, it's surprising how many paranormal occurrences do take place in the toilets. I think it could be quite a busy night, certainly from my point of view, of sensing things. Whether, of course, we can get them to actually activate will be a completely different thing. I hope we can. There certainly seems to be a lot of presences around, inside and indeed outside the building. There doesn't seem to be any reports of anything terrible happening that we know of but I do believe that it's got secrets that it may well unleash tonight. I do believe this place is haunted. There's no doubt. Not in my mind, anyway. The baseline test was completed by our paranormal investigator, Phil Wyman. A trigger object was set and a dictaphone was placed in one of the most active rooms. This all looked promising, but did Phil think we were in for a good night? 
The main activity here tends to focus on visual apparitions and figures. Those figures include a man with a black beard looking forlornly out the windows here, and also that of a grandmother type figure who's been described as being in her 80s and seen mainly by children. Now, this might sound strange, but one of the main places of activity is the ladies' toilets, where uh, figures have been seen, and also children, again, mainly report seeing black shoes poking out from underneath the cubicles. Now, we have to remember that when this building was originally built, that wouldn't have been a toilet at all. Another area of the location that has seen quite a lot of activity is the restaurant area. Now, this used to be part of a chapel, and it's going to be where I'm going to be setting up my cross trigger object for tonight. I'm pretty hopeful that we're going to get something on camera tonight, but who knows, we can never tell. During the day, the Manor House is a busy restaurant that didn't feel creepy or unusual in any way. Would the atmosphere change as night fell? I had invited medium Derek Okora to join the crew for the rest of the night in hopes that he would make contact with any supposed spirits that roam this old building. We were all looking forward to the night ahead, but would all that change as we began our investigation at the Manor House restaurant? Mentally, I'm getting like, as we come into the energy here, um, is if I've got like, strange as it may sound, a dual, dual impressions. And I know one would, why we're getting it here, I don't know, but I, a little bit earlier I got it again. Um, I'll quickly tell you the first impressions. And that was of, there was a sickly feeling that st started to build up from in, within with me. And this feeling of heat, and, and it seems that the heat was getting stronger around me and stronger and stronger. And I felt as if I was in a useless, um, situation uh, and quite honestly I just felt as if I had flames just coming all around me engulfing me. We may as we go through the night on the investigation find out why the connection is okay. where <clears throat> we will finally land mm -hmm. right. to get those uh, impressions but uh, you know if we went a little you know there's a little girl that runs around here mm -hmm. a little girl mm -hmm. And this little girl, she doesn't stay put in one place. She, she runs and what have you. But I feel with this little girl for some reason, as if she, her impressions are coming to me as if I'm just doing this. Now, these windows here, these windows, mm. now my attention is drawn not to so much the window, but I feel as if this little one is just, just barely tall enough to look out of a window and look down. What does she look like? This is a light-haired girl. Um, I feel that she would be probably three, four, five, mm. between that age. Very pretty little thing. Um, and I feel that she would have lost her life around that period of time due to... Um, what's that, Sam? What? OK, that wasn't an illness. OK, to smoke inhalation through a fire. So that's why you're picking up fire. And when you said yes. this time, what time do you mean? Oh, gosh, when, when's that, Sam? <clears throat> I feel as we get closer to the area where there's a very small window and below that, lower down, where I feel that the fire, that's where I'm drawn to, mm. we'll be able to connect the two. OK. And the little girl... Oh, look, you see, I'm getting quite an elderly woman. Um strong set woman mm. but elderly and it seems as if like she's um oh god look at that okay there's a pushing what she's pushed i feel there's a pushing into flames and she pushed the little girl into the flames yeah but she also was in the flames as well right they both lost their lives mm. in the flames you say an elderly woman, how old would you say she was? To me, she'd be late 70s. Mm. Probably about, I don't know, 78, 79. Around that age. Mm. <clears throat> um, and, um... Why would, she push you? Why would she have done that? I don't know at this moment, Ev, I really don't. But I feel, in the way of doing it, as if, also, this old soul, this old lady, 
ended up get catching fire herself mm. and perish the same way. Oh, you won't believe this. Thank you, Sam. This old lady was the grandmother of the child. Mm. She was an actual grandmother of the child. Why would a grandmother do that? Thank you. I feel it'll, it'll unfold far, far greater if and we get to the area which this condition mm. took place. Do you want to go? Can we? Yeah, come on. Because I feel we, as we get closer, we'll, we'll get to know. The, incidentally, while we're up, up here, mm. there's a lot of sounds in this area. I feel even like a sound of um, screeching that takes place here. Mm. And that screeching is caused by a, a spirit person, again, who's not grounded, but comes back here in torment of what he did. God, can we go down there? Yeah. Into that place? Are we allowed to go in there? Down there? All right. Because it, it seems a lot of these noises and stuff is happening and coming, filtering from that level. The area to which Derek had been drawn was a side building containing some of the artefacts excavated during the renovation of the house. Would the presence of these objects bring us any closer to uncovering the dark secrets of the manor house? Derek had already picked up on the deaths of an old woman and a little girl by fire, as well as the presence of a male soul in torment. Would he be able to give us the names for these spirits and tell us why they still roamed the building? I was aware a little bit earlier on, and still am now with the residual energy of a person who, who was, um, first of all, struck down in this area, uh, found themselves in a, a lying position, um, and I feel just, if I can use that word, rendered unconscious um, and was actually the person who did this had full intentions of not just rendering the person unconscious but to actually do them naturally uh, bodily harm. In other words, wanted to kill them, kill that person. Right. <clears throat> and I feel um, like I'm getting the energy now as if a feeling as if this other person did this here and took away the, the physical of the person and quite simply, um, the only way I can describe it is just like um, cut away and chop and what have you and like a dismem dismemberment so of who, a body. Who was this person that, that, <coughs> the that pers committed the, the, the murder? I feel the person who um, actually did this um, was a, a man, uh, a male, who had in clothing was uh, heavily covered up. It's like a cape, gown, whatever. Um, and I feel a very, very gaunt-looking, um, very drawn-looking soul. Um, I am aware, however, I am aware now of the shoes or the footing. And it seems to, whether I'm describing this, it's like as if he's got a buckle across these... Um, shoes, but they weren't shoes, they were like a boot, mm -hmm. but they were most of the, the boot was covered up. But this, I'm very aware for some reason of these big buckles around my uh, feet. It's like as if at one point he's looking down as he rendered this to the person unconscious, thinking what he's going to do. And I feel without a doubt the cutting up of a physical torso, cutting up and it, you know, taken away and in. There's an area in which this person's uh, remains, I feel, is still about. Hmm. Um, and has been, it's not been discovered, um, even to, to this day. The person was rendered unconscious and whilst in that state was dragged off the physical, mm. out there, out there. Yeah. And then I feel in fact, I could be led to it, where this cutting up and the chopping up of the physical the torso. Is this inside the building that this happened, are you saying? I feel that, no, not actually inside. 
I feel the person was trapped in this area, mm. rendered unconscious, physically dragged. <clears throat> well, let's go out and see, see where you, you okay. feel you're drawn to. Now, as we come out in this area, I feel as if I'm so strongly drawn to this person whose body was um, cut and what have you. But whilst we're here, because we've come into these energies, I want you to look up there. Oh, yeah. See, there's a window. Yeah. I, I, I just, I'm just drawn up to there. And as if, I would say, this little girl that I was picking up oh, earlier you on... Oh, the window, didn't you? Yeah, up there. Right. And... I wouldn't be at all surprised that if someone was either out working here or what have you, um, at times they look up, they probably see it in that window. Yeah. And there's another window, a smaller window in that, where she gets seen as well, I feel. Mm. She moves to two places. Mm. But I feel, you know, I'm under this area here. This is where you're saying the remains are? Yeah, I feel going back here... I feel we're, we're in this area. So you're saying if, 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 if the owners, you know, at whatever time were to, to dig this area up, they would find human remains? I really do, yeah. With all the lights switched off in the building, the whole place took on a different feel. Derek led us to the bedchamber, where once again he was getting the psychic impressions of flames, and he was not the only one. I would just say, for some reason, again, I'm getting this um, feeling, this essence of, uh, again, for some reason, uh, the flames, OK, that I got earlier. Um, why it's transported to here, I don't know at this moment in time, but I want to... Um, Do you uh, know what I feel really scared? Yeah. Well, I, I feel that your feelings that you're getting here now, um, it's like your psychic hackles being alarmed and alerted to um, this atmosphere. I can't stop looking down there, yeah. where we've just come from. Yeah. yeah it's I was just expecting a black something void, to... isn't it? It's yeah. just completely but dark. There would be absolute movement coming up from below. Is, is Sam able to give us a name for the, the old woman? Hold oh, on. Uh... Come on, thank you. Who? Say it again, Sam, as you're asking. Sorry, yeah, Phil. No, thank you. Right. The little girl that perished within the flames, mm. she wasn't pushed, she wasn't pushed. Right. Mm. Um, now we're in this atmosphere. I feel that it was like there was an accident, it was accidental. It was like too close to it. You know, this was a fireplace. Mm. It was not. The fire began at the fireplace. Right. And because the little girl who's fallen slipped, and I feel this older lady, little girl's called Emily. Mm -hmm. Emily. 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 Okay. That's, not, that's strange you should mention that. Why? Because um, the staff here have nicknamed one of the, the presences Emily. Well, the little girl's Emily. Right, OK. Any surname? Can you give me the surname of the... You know, and the older, the older lady, the elderly lady, thank you, Sam, he's just given me Sarah. Sarah. And is that, you say, is that still the grandmother? The grandmother to this child. Mm. She was trying to save her she, by her going forward. I, I got this feeling, sometimes spirit people do that to me, in a gesture. Mm. And I thought, just for them, and I thought, how can a grandmother, mm. you know, well, she, but she, wasn't she, she was she trying to save her? Mm. And here, that's where the fire started. Mm. The uh, gulf under the flames and what have you. I'm from the physical torso, then the surrounding area, and of course, and there was a big fire. So can I just, sorry, sorry, can I just say yeah. something? Since we've been here, I've got this feeling on my hand and it, it, it is getting worse and it feels like... And I'm, I, I know people would say, oh, it, it's, um, psychological. it's psychological, but I feel like I've been burnt mm -hmm. on my hand, just where my little finger is, yes. down the side here, onto my wrist, and it feels like someone's poured, like, boiling hot water just there, mm -hmm. and it's so... Tender. Yeah. And well, I don't know what that is or okay. why. Right, well, often this occurrence takes place, it's a natural occurrence. You're, you're a female, um, these um, horrible things happen to two females, one very young and one very elderly, uh, and you're walking through the residual energy. Now, now, it's bound to attach, you're bound to take a little bit of that residual energy of what actually happened in that experience, mm. and, and, and it would... It won't stay with you for, you know, forever and a day, but it, you are witnessing an experience of picking up from that residual energy. That's what I feel. Um, it may, it may 
as we move about go to what we call a higher pitch where you know and then it will subside it can't stay with you all the time as we made our way to the sealed room the crew began to feel tense and uneasy I feel I feel more more scared in this room than than the other for some reason I don't know why I'm not too not too sure why but it certainly has it certainly makes you feel you know it makes you feel quite nervous I think coming into I haven't been very comfortable up here I must yeah. admit since we first came up yeah and and I in this room especially I've got quite a, a headache yeah and I mean earlier when I came in I, I, I for, some, for some reason I was I was quite I got this angry feeling mm -hmm. for no reason I don't like it in here. I feel yeah. like I'm being watched. What about you, yeah. Stuart? I know lately I've been suffering from a bad back, um, but it's been fine all day. It's not really bothered me. But since I've come in, over the last couple of minutes, I've got pains all the way up down the side of my spine and all the way down to my pelvis, uh, which are quite bad. So, and that's just since I've walked in now. Again, Derek, would that be what you're talking about? We're picking up pick residual? Absolutely, energy? absolutely. And, you know, whilst we're talking now, I'd like to point this out here. Mm. The only way I can take it as well is that at certain times, um, if someone, one of the staff and whatever were in this area, they would hear very, very, very strong noises above. Which, if you were down the steps where we've come from, mm -hmm. you would think the noises were coming from here. Mm -hmm. But they're taking place above and, be, and giving the impression that it's happening in here. <gasps> Say that. Go on, repeat it to me. I'm getting a name, a surname given to me, and it's plain and simple, Clark. Mm. Is, who's, Clark. That, who's that connected to? Who's that connected to, Sam? Well, all he's given me is Clark is responsible for up here. Unbeknownst to Derek, earlier in the day, Carl, Phil and Richard had ventured up into the attic where they discovered a fireplace and a small window. It's another chimney. So there's a chimney coming up from down below. And this is just in front of it. And you can feel the draft, yeah. And this is a chimney for here. And it's, wow, yeah, it's been bricked up. But it's a, this is a chimney t which joins to the big chimney. This suggests to us that this area would once have been living quarters. So Derek was definitely on the right track. So far, our night seemed to have got off to a promising start. The question now was, would the spirits detected by Derek make themselves known to us? As usual, we split up into small groups so that we could investigate the building thoroughly. My group decided to conduct a seance as both mediums, David and Derek, thought this could create enough energy to generate activity for us to catch on camera. Whilst we set up, Carl and Stuart had gone to the sealed room where unexplained noises and footsteps were being experienced on a regular basis. It's nice and quiet now. Can't hear any of the crew. Can't hear anything. No, oh, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, you, got, you can't hear anything. No creaks. It was just deathly quiet. Did someone move the table then? Did somebody move the table? No, I didn't move it. Do you feel that? So it was a real slight nudge. No. You just knocked on the table then? No, I didn't. Who's, is, anyone's, is anyone's feet touching the leg or... No, mine are under the chair. Under the chair. <laughs> mine are under the chair. I just hear chair. that knock then. I, I had a noise. No, it wasn't okay. me. Not me. OK. Well, I just heard a little knock on the I table. I did. I heard it, yeah. I feel a real slight nudge. A real slight nudge. If you are with us, little Emily, please come around the circle of love. You're most welcome. Try in whatever little way that you can. Oh, 
Is that? She me. I feel weird. I feel really strange. Yeah, I do. What I feel. You mean? I just feel. Um, I feel like I did um, that time. Do you? Uh, yeah, that I had. We had the séance, and I, I started to feel just um, my mood changed. I feel very warm inside, though. Is this the little girl? Is it the little girl that's that's? Um, I think she's close by. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I feel like she, I don't know why, but I, just, I get the impression, I just got this image of her dancing around and touching each one of us and just literally jumping, you know, like mm -hmm. skipping around us. That's yeah. exactly what she's doing. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's, I don't know why, I, I, I never, I never, I never visualise things like that, but mm -hmm. I do now, I don't know why. I feel anxious now. Mm-hmm. Is there a spirit of a little girl in this room with us here? Please try to make contact with us. Please use your energy. Please use our energy. Have you moved? Something came from that corner over there. Now the temperature in this room has dropped considerably. I'm going to sit here and if there is something here, we're going to catch it. Do you want to try and talk to us? If you do, try and knock on the table where we're sitting. What's the matter? Okay. Yeah. What's up? Right. <laughs> Something just grabbed me. I didn't say that again. Really? Something grabbed me underneath on my arm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, like something tugged. At... I'm really shaking. I feel really weird. I feel really, really strange. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> It's because I feel what's happening now. Even though the child's essence is around us, we have been joined, it appears, by a male. Yeah. And then it's come very close. And now the little girl is like jumped out. She is aware of him and he's he's doing his little round around us now at the moment, looking at us. So any spirit people that can hear my voice and see our energy and you want to understand why you are still housed here now is the time please try and communicate no, it's behind the behind the bar please try and communicate please try and communicate all over my head is killing me now. Oh, I feel really, I don't feel good. I feel lightheaded in there. I feel relaxed and nervous at the same time, but very lightheaded. If you are here, please show yourself. We know you are here. You're making various sounds noises. If that is you, well well done. There you go. Yeah. Can you please do that again for us? That noise. It sounds like scratching on the panel. If that is you, well well done. If that's you scratching on a panel in can you please continue to make that sound?
brilliant. This, oh. I'm so excited about that. Please try to show this that you're here. Can you can you please make the sounds louder than what you're making them at the moment, so that our camera can pick them up? I heard that. I so heard that. my footsteps. Yeah, it did. Was that you? Were they your footsteps we just heard? We heard something on that far corner over there. It sounded like one footstep or two. If that's you, can you please do that again for us? We know you are here. I've got a feel well I I feel right now as though we're being watched. Um, so the fuck do I? I really we, fucking do. I do feel as though we're being watched and it and it's in a nice way. I don't think it's in a nasty or violent way. <clears throat> you feel that's a nice way? I, f I feel completely the opposite. I really do feel completely the opposite. If that was you, can you please do that again for us please? Thank you. Thank you for that, we heard that. I'm oh, sorry Stuart, I was really fucking thinking about yes, just, just, just stay, just... No, I'm, I'm just, gonna stay, I'm gonna stay, I'm just stay. Noises were definitely being heard on the upper floors, and Carl and Stuart were unable to ascertain what or where they were coming from. It was time for my group to take over from where the boys had left off. Hopefully, Richard, John, Derek and myself would also witness the same noises. Derek's found the priest hole. Have you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a priest hole, yeah. Can you get in? Yeah, well, you, you can climb it. Oh, definitely, yes. Where does it go up to? Where does it go? Alcove, it's it? just an alcove, yeah, I can't believe really it. Right, oh. Yeah, careful, there's a, there's a little, I think it's just a bit of rubbish in the, in the bottom. It's a bit cold, isn't it? Ew. Jesus! Hey. What the freaking hell is that? Did it fall off the couch? Yeah. I think it's just the Did wind. Did it? There's no wind up there. Well, it's closed now. If it does it again. I don't like it. I don't like it in here. I feel pretty uncomfortable in it. Like it, is, yeah. it is. It's definitely cold, isn't it? I mean, it's yeah. very, yeah. very cold. Yeah. Um, I feel uncomfortable, yeah. I have to tell you, though, up there, there is a, there is a fan. Mm -hmm. That's bringing air in here. Yes. Or letting it, and it might make a noise as well, um, which might be adding to the. Cup. There again. Bye. It has gone screen. again. Yeah. Oh, oh shit! Oh, right, okay. It is. That's, That's twice. Two. Richard, lock it or, or, or. Okay. Don't put the lock right. Just oh, leave it as right. it is. Right. right. Now that's latch. That's on. Look. Right. Okay. Everybody can see right. that's latch. You actually feel. Shh! Um, what was that? Yeah, I heard that again. Was here. That mm. wasn't your foot again. I heard. I heard. I heard something down there. I heard. Did you? Yeah. Um, is anyone down there? Can you tap on something? Bang on something? Walk up these stairs? Anything? I know it's asking a lot, but please, please try so hard for us.
The investigation at the Manor House restaurant was becoming more intriguing by the minute. Little did we know we were about to get the fright of our lives. After hearing several more noises from the staircase, we decided to go down and investigate. All we found was a locked door leading to the courtyard, so we moved on to investigate the lady's toilet, where various apparitions have been sighted. I don't know. John, what was that? Oh! 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 Don't worry. Still, what the don't, fuck was don't that? Don't worry, don't worry. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. You're right, you're right. Oh! Perfect explanation, Evie. Oh! Yeah, it's okay. It? Tape recorder. It wasn't spiritual, it wasn't. Tape recorder? No. no. Oh, if you come around, I'll show you. Fuck. Fuck. You're right. Now, was that door. Was that door ajar? No, I closed it. Well, it was a jar. Oh, come on, Evie, you're right. You're right, you're right, you're right. Something spat at you. I know, I know, I know. I heard it something. It was something. Something spat at him. The door was a jar. Well, I know. Something spat no, no, no. at him. OK, now, look, there's a machine up here. Does no. that spit out any of this fragrance? Of course it's not going to spit anything out, is it? Well, okay. you know, can we get hang out? On, hang on, hang on. No, 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 look. Have you got a torch or something? Yes, I'll put the door down here. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Look, it is, it is quite possible. I know, it, that was that scared the shit out of me, but... Did you smell that around there now? That's pumped out of <laughs> fragrance, hasn't it? <laughs> yes, yes, it... Yeah. <laughs> You're all right. You're all right. <laughs> We were not only embarrassed, but also disappointed about what had just occurred. One thing it did do was show just how easy it is to overreact when everyday occurrences are interpreted as paranormal in the heat of the moment. Having gained their composure, John and Derek decided to venture up to the sealed room once again, accompanied by Rachel, Phil and Kath, to see if they could record more of the mysterious noises that have been heard there throughout the night. Well, we're here. Whoever is here, spirit person, come on. Come on. Come on, do it again. Emily, if that's you, come across. Let's say you're walking across. You seem to have seem quiet now, do you? Know? Very, absolutely. When we first came in, it was, it was, it was getting quite a bit of stuff there. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, Tom, Richard and David have been investigating the museum room. Hearing footsteps as well. I heard footsteps. I just thought it was Stuart. Not only did I hear footsteps, but I saw someone go, go past here. Now I swear to you. You saw the light change. Under I, the I door. saw the light change underneath this door. I heard them too. You heard it. I Absolutely. definitely heard footsteps. I mean, I'm, I'm not. There's no bullshitting here or anything else. I saw it as well, um, and it went this way towards the. Mountains. It went this. I mean, we shall ask Stuart. Stuart. Where are you? Sorry? Where? Oh, you've not just walked past, you've not just walked under here, have you? No. Under this archway where we are? No. Definitely not. 
It's going the wrong way anyway. Right, you, you heard it, David heard it. Yeah, it went this way, and it went, so I watched it go this way. There's no, bloody hell. Uh, I can. I, I. I heard that. I mean, I, I, I assumed it was Stuart walking past. No, he's out there. And de-rigging and. Yeah, and, what and have if it, anything, it would walk this way. The majority of the crew had witnessed audible activity, particularly in the recently uncovered room in the south wing. Although a certain amount of naturally occurring creaks and thuds are to be expected in any old building, many of the sounds witnessed appeared to be footsteps coming from the attic above, an area which had been explored earlier in the day and would have been inaccessible to anyone during the night. The locked-off camera in the chapel had failed to capture any evidence of spirit activity. I, however, had filmed this light anomaly in the sealed room, and various noises were caught on tape that seemed to come from the stairs. Richard Felix was convinced that he had witnessed a dark figure passing the door of the museum room, and Tom, our sound recordist, did hear footsteps. John Dibley, who is normally quite sceptical, believed he witnessed the presence of a little girl during the seance. I have had the most fantastic time at the Manor House. Lots and lots of paranormal activity, and in my opinion, the funniest thing ever, because uh, I have this thing about toilet ghost stories. And there we all were in the toilets, and it just goes to show how, how easy fear can spread. We were absolutely terrified, is the only word that I can say. But it was a very, very good event, and I thought the night was over. That, that was enough for me. Um, it really was. And then I went off um, with David Wells and Tom, and we got what I believe to be paranormal activity. There we were, talking away, and then all of a sudden, someone walks past the door. Now, all three of us heard it, and I actually saw the light being, for want of a better word, obliterated by the footsteps that went past the door. In my opinion, the Manor House restaurant is definitely haunted. Come on. There are issues with hearing noises at haunted locations, especially old locations where there's wood in the construction. At various points in the evening, the temperature may go up or down, and this could cause the wood to expand or contract thereby creating popping or creaking sounds. Now in a haunted location, those popping and creaking sounds may be interpreted as footsteps or other noises of spirits. The knocking that the crew here sitting around the seance table is not unusual in this sort of environment. As early as the 1840s when seances first began, people were using the knocking sounds to communicate with spirits. Do you feel there are a lot of explanations for what the knocking may be, and the most obvious one is that perhaps somebody is unconsciously knocking on the table. In this particular clip, we only hear a knock once, and so somebody maybe with a ring on their finger has tapped it without realising, and it's been picked up by the boom mic. Well, I was hearing footsteps as well. I had footsteps, but I just thought it was N Not only did I hear footsteps, but I saw someone go, go past here. And I swear to you. You saw the light change underneath the I, I door. I saw the light change underneath this door. In this clip, Richard Felix apparently sees feet go past the door at the same time that other members of the crew hear footsteps. In terms of the audible phenomena, the actual footsteps, what we may be getting is just an aspect of the house, so we may be getting the wood reacting to temperature change. The actual feet that Richard Felix sees is very, very interesting. There's obviously nothing fraudulent at work here, because otherwise, on the floor outside, we would have seen uh, wet footprints, because there are other wet areas around this location. So we know it's not fraudulent. However, what Richard may have been seeing is the light change shows shadows behind the door which could have been caused by somebody else in the courtyard or in another area of the hotel walking past a light and that could have caused the shadow. It's a possibility. Are the inhabitants of the past 800 years still living at the manor house? Perhaps they see us as shadowy figures they do not understand. If so, 
did they resent the intrusion. Until next time, sleep tight.